video is going to focus on how cells divide, both the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Cells must make copies of themselves if the population of single-celled organisms is to be maintained. Multicellular organisms also need to make copies of their cells to keep growing and to repair themselves. Cell division is the process of one cell dividing to produce two cells. It is important that during cell division, the genetic information is passed on to the next generation of cells, as well as copies of all organelles necessary for proper cell functioning. The parent cell is the cell that divides, and the two new cells are called the daughter cells. Remember that this is one tenet of the cell theory. All cells come from pre-existing cells. In prokaryotic cells with a single chromosome of DNA, the cell divides by binary fission, where DNA is copied and the cell simply divides into two daughter cells. In eukaryotic cells, where there are multiple chromosomes, the cell will undergo mitosis. For sexually reproducing organisms, egg and sperm, two divisions are required, producing four daughter cells. This process is called meiosis. When a cell gets to a certain size, it needs to divide into two. This is done by cytokinesis, which is division of the cytoplasm, and follows the final stage of nuclear division, mitosis. During division, the organelles of the cell are distributed evenly between the cells. The process is different in animal and plant cells due to the rigid cell wall of plants. In animal cells, the plasma membrane pinches in, forming a cleavage furrow, which is an indentation in the plasma membrane. A contractile ring made of actin, myosin, and other proteins forms, and that pinches the cell membrane together to divide the cytoplasm. Because of the cell wall, plant cells form a cell plate. The cell plate is built by vesicles formed from the Golgi apparatus. These vesicles line on the equator where they combine to form new plasma membrane and cell walls between the two new cells. When parent cells divide to produce two daughter cells in body tissue, the division of cytoplasm in organelles is equal, so that each new daughter cell is identical and equal in size to the parent cell. Cells undergoing mitosis have equal division of cytoplasm, as does sperm cells in meiosis. An example of when this division of cytoplasm is not equal is the production of egg cells, oogenesis. During this process, only one large egg, or ovum, is produced, as well as two to three smaller cells called polar bodies. These do not go forward and are not available for fertilization. Oogenesis is a process that begins in the fetus before birth, and the final development is finished during the adult life. An oocyte is an immature egg cell, or ovum. When the primary oocyte divides, the cytoplasm divides unevenly, forming a secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Then when the secondary oocyte divides, another polar body is formed. Polar bodies are holding cells for the genetic material not used, and they degenerate. Their cytoplasm and cellular components, except for the genetic material, are absorbed by the final ovum. You will learn later that the sperm contributes genetic material only. It does not provide cytoplasm or organelles in the fertilization process. Thus, the egg must have everything the growing embryo requires. Before cells divide, they grow. Cells cannot continue to keep growing because there is a point where the surface area to volume ratio is inadequate to allow transfer of materials into the cell and removal of waste materials and products out of the cell. This is when the cell will divide. Surface area to volume ratio is discussed in more detail in B2.3. Sometimes the difference between cell division and nuclear division can be confusing. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus, while cytokinesis is a division of the cytoplasm, and thus the cell. It is important that nuclear division occur before cell division to avoid producing a cell that does not have a nucleus. A cell without a nucleus is called a nucleate. There are two processes that divide the nucleus, mitosis, which occurs in somatic cells, and meiosis, which occurs in gametes. Mitosis results in the production of two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the parent, especially with respect to genetic material. This means that each daughter cell has the same genome as the parent, as all genetic information is preserved. Meiosis is the process that occurs in gametes, or sex cells. It is very important that each egg and sperm have half of the genetic material. In humans, that is 23 chromosomes. During fertilization, the egg will have 23 chromosomes and the sperm will have 23 chromosomes, with the resulting zygote having 46, the defining number of chromosomes in a human. Diploid cell is a term used to describe a cell that has all the required DNA, 
while haploid is the term used to describe a cell that has half the amount of required DNA. Somatic cells are diploid and during mitosis produce diploid cells, while meiosis produces haploid cells. Meiosis is a process that produces four daughter cells, each having only half the number of chromosomes, and each one of those daughter cells are genetically different from their parent and each other. This ensures there is genetic diversity in offspring. While in the diagram shows four genetically different daughter cells, remember our earlier discussion that in oogenesis, only one true egg is formed with two to three polar bodies. This unequal division of cytoplasm does not occur in the production of sperm. Before a cell divides, the DNA must be copied to ensure that each daughter cell has the genetic material necessary. This occurs in the S phase, or synthesis phase, of the cell cycle. The actual process of DNA replication is covered in another video. DNA replication produces double-stranded chromosomes, and each strand is called a sister chromatid and are genetically identical, held together by a centromere. A centromere is a DNA sequence that can be seen as a constricted area of a chromosome. During division, the two sister chromatids are pulled apart with one for each daughter cell. Do not be confused by the terminology. A chromosome is one double-stranded DNA molecule. Humans have 46, or 23 pairs. During the S phase of the cell cycle, the chromosomes replicate. Whenever you see the familiar X shape of a chromosome, remember that occurs during DNA replication, and you are seeing the two sister chromatids connecting at the centromere. The total length of all a human's DNA, all 46 chromosomes, is about 2 meters. During most of the life of a cell, the DNA is spread out in long chains. So that DNA is not broken and tangled, it must be condensed in a process that wraps DNA around proteins called histones. This is similar to how thread is wrapped around a spool to keep the thread from breaking and tangling. The histone proteins are essential in organizing the DNA within the nucleus, and are positively charged with a high concentration of amino acids, such as lysine and arginine. A nucleosome is the name given to the DNA wrapped around the histone proteins. The nucleosome is a unit of eukaryotic chromosome structure and consists of eight histone proteins wrapped by two coils of DNA that consists of approximately 220 base pairs. DNA is wrapped around the histone proteins and wrapped again in a process called supercoiling. This places the coils on top of each other, which forms a very compact pair of chromatids. The term chromatin is used to refer to DNA that is associated with histone proteins. After supercoiling is finished, the chromosome takes that familiar X shape. This packaging of DNA is very important as it allows DNA to be moved as one rather than being spread out throughout the nucleus. An organelle in the cell, called a centrosome, produces spindle fibers made of microtubules that are used to guide the chromosomes to the correct place before they can divide. Microtubules are not permanent and can be assembled and disassembled as needed. One end of the microtubule is negative and the other end is positive, which gives them directionality. Motor proteins within the cell are used to push and pull items around a cell. The microtubules are the tracks on which the motor proteins travel. Motor proteins can also attach to two microtubules and slide past each other. This is an active process and utilizes ATP to provide a conformational change needed to move the microtubules. There are three types of microtubules. The astral microtubules reach out from the centrosome, while the kinetochore microtubules attach to the centromere of the chromosome. The third type, the overlapping microtubules, are not attached to any chromosomes but rather pass beside them. Motor proteins are between the overlap proteins and move along the microtubules in a way that pushes the microtubules in opposite directions. During nuclear division, the sister chromatids are pulled apart, each one being transported to one half of the cell. Interphase is the term used to describe the cell when not undergoing cellular division. During interphase, the cell is undergoing normal cell functions, such as cellular respiration and protein synthesis, as well as growing and preparing to divide. Mitosis is the process that will produce two genetically identical daughter cells and consists of four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Think of prophase as cells preparing to divide. The chromatin becomes visible 
as they become more tightly coiled to form chromosomes. The spindle fibers form, and the centrosomes move to the poles of the cell. The nuclear membrane begins to disappear, as does the nucleolus. Think of metaphase as middle, as the chromosomes move to the equator of the cell called the metaphase plate. The centromeres line up on the plate, and the spindle fibers are attached to the kinetochores. The centrosomes are at opposite poles of the cell. During anaphase, think apart, chromatids have separated into chromosomes. They move to the opposite poles of the cell by the motor proteins pushing the microtubules in opposite directions. At the end of anaphase, each pole has the chromosomes needed for a new cell. Telophase is the last phase, think two nuclei, and finds a set of chromosomes at each pole. The nuclear membrane begins to reform around each set of chromosomes and the nucleolus reappears. The spindle apparatus is gone and the cell elongates, getting ready to undergo cytokinesis. Looking at this micrograph of mitosis, you are able to see all phases of mitosis. Prophase showing the condensed chromosomes. Metaphase showing where the chromosomes are lined up on the metaphase plate. You can see the chromosomes pulling apart during anaphase. And in telophase, there is a cell forming a cell plate, showing the two nuclei and the cell beginning to undergo cytokinesis. Mitosis produces two genetically identical diploid cells, while meiosis produces four genetically different haploid cells. Meiosis is nuclear division in sex cells and consists of two stages of division, meiosis one and meiosis two. Meiosis is the process that reduces the number of chromosomes from diploid to haploid. The first stage of meiosis, meiosis one, is when the chromosome number is halved. The names of the phases are the same as mitosis, only we add either a 1 or 2 to identify which phase. Many of the processes that happen in meiosis may sound similar to mitosis. In prophase 1, chromosomes become visible and more compact. Homologous chromosomes are attached to each other and undergo crossing over. Crossing over only occurs in prophase 1, and parts of the homologous pairs can be exchanged. The homologous chromosomes together are called a bivalent. Bindle fibers begin to form and the nuclear membrane begins to disappear, as does the nucleolus. In metaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate and they are randomly oriented, which means that either of the chromosomes from the pair is equally likely to be pulled to either pole. During anaphase 1, the spindle fibers pull the chromosomes apart to the poles. During telophase 1, the spindle fibers disappear and two new nuclear membranes form. Cytokinesis occurs after telophase 1. The cells are now haploid, as they only contain one chromosome of each pair, but the sister chromatids are still attached, so there is not an S phase where chromosomes are duplicated. It is during meiosis 2 that the sister chromatids will separate. In prophase 2, the DNA condense again, but there is no crossing over. New spindle fibers form. In metaphase 2, the nuclear membrane is gone and the individual chromosomes line up randomly along the metaphase plate. Bindle fibers attach to the sister chromatids. The sister chromatids are pulled apart during anaphase 2. Nuclear membranes form around each of the four new cells. A cell plate forms in plant cells and in animal cells. The cell membrane pinches in. Cytokinesis can now occur. There are some instances when mistakes can be made during meiosis, which can result in the offspring receiving an incorrect number of chromosomes, which can include extra or missing chromosomes. In humans, an example is Down syndrome, or trisomy 21. In this case, the child has three copies of chromosome 21. Non-disjunction is the term used when chromosomes do not separate and can occur in meiosis 1, when the bivalents fail to separate, or during meiosis II when the sister chromatids fail to separate. If this happens during formation of an egg, the egg will have two chromosomes of 21. And if that egg is fertilized, the offspring will now have three chromosomes of 21, two from the mother and one from the father. Non-disjunction can occur in other chromosomes as well. Three chromosomes of 18, called Edwards syndrome, and three chromosomes of 13, called Patau syndrome, Trisomy of other chromosomes are usually not viable and are a frequent cause of miscarriage. Meiosis generates genetic diversity by crossing over and random orientation. 
During interphase, when DNA is copied, the cell makes a complete copy of all its genetic information. This results in each chromatid having an identical copy or sister chromatid attached to it. Because meiosis produces four genetically different cells, the cells must divide twice. Meiosis I produces two cells, and then each of these cells divides during meiosis II, producing four cells. A major difference between mitosis and meiosis is that there is no crossing over in mitosis. Crossing over only occurs in prophase I and happens when two homologous chromosomes, but not sister chromatids, twist around each other, break at the same place, and connect to the other. The place where the two chromosomes cross is called a chiasma. Plural is a chiasmata. Virtually, all pairs of chromosomes undergo crossing over and form at least one chiasma, with most having more than one place where crossing over occurs. Crossing over increases genetic variability due to DNA being exchanged between maternal and paternal DNA. Random orientation is how the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate in both metaphase 1 and 2. Each pair lines up independent of how the other chromosomes line up. How they line up will determine what chromosomes are in each resulting cell. The chance of lining up the same twice can be calculated by 2 superscript n for humans, that is 2 to the 23rd, or over 8 million ways the chromosomes can line up. This creates a tremendous amount of variability.